And here we go. This is Mike Lodge. I am the business advisor, and this is my podcast. And I'm glad that you have joined me early this Friday morning. TGIF is Friday. I love Fridays. But listen, on Fridays is supposed to be my day off. But most of the time, I don't get my day off <laughs> because I've got so much work left on my desk. I don't mind work. Really, I don't. But see, my plan was Fridays would be an extra day off during the summertime for me. But so far, it hasn't worked out. Listen, I was reading an article this morning from AccuWeather. And on the southeast side of the United States, we have a huge dust storm coming our way from Africa. Let me read you what it says. It says, Aki Weather meteorologists are tracking several large clouds of dust from Africa's Sahara Desert that are currently drifting over the Atlantic Ocean. The immense clouds have the potential to traverse the entire ocean and reduce air quality across the Caribbean and the southeastern United States in the coming days. Now, I have been in dust storms before. When I lived in Phoenix, Arizona, we used to get these huge dust storms. You could literally see this brown coming across Phoenix and coming towards your house. And everything, everything became dusty. So I've been through this before. I tell you, you sneeze and you cough and you do all sorts of different things. I don't know how strong this one is coming from Africa. I, I'm, I'm assuming that if you can see it from the satellites and it's coming over and you can see that dark brown cloud coming this way, it probably means that we're going to get affected in some way or another. I hate dust. I hate dust more than anything. When I have to clean my house in this dust, I am, I am, uh, well, let's just say that I go a sneezing really bad. The other thing that was really surprising to me this morning is, I guess yesterday, the the congresswoman known as uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene was voted out. Was voted out of House Freedom Caucus. Now, if you know the Freedom Caucus, that's the 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 very conservative side of the of the Congress and the Republican side. Now you know she has a big mouth, and I have sent her several tweets saying, "You know what? If you keep doing this, if you keep acting this way, sooner or later it's going to catch up with you. You cannot be calling other members names." And I guess what she did, she called another female, a member of of the GOP Congress, a bitch. And that didn't go over well with a lot of people. Ethically, it's not right to be calling other people names in Congress. And they've been having this feud back and forth of who's in, who wrote the original impeachment papers. <laughs> so they go back and forth. And then Marjorie Green says that this uh, other uh, member of Congress, Lorimar or whatever her name is, uh, had stolen her paperwork, had stolen her bill, It was copying her bill. So there's been this feud going back and forth. Now, I don't like to see these feuds because it makes you look stupid. And so when you see Marjorie Taylor Greene acting stupid, you kind of lose respect for her. I've also called, come down on her on other issues of uh, saying there's all of this evidence, 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 evidence of 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 bribery and everything, but they never show any of the evidence and they don't ever come to an impeachment side. So, you you, you guys, listen, if you're going to say that you've got all, the, all of this impeachment stuff, you better use it. Don't sit there and talk about it. Do something about it. And then last night, I'm changing the subject now, last night there was this individual that came on to... Um, 
I, I saw them. I saw him on uh, YouTube, and he was the missing witness that they that uh, the chairman of the committee to look into the Biden fiasco, the crime, the the bribery and everything else that they're looking at. This guy had gone missing. And now he is in hiding because there are members of the FBI and the Department of Justice who are after this guy. And that's, now, honestly, if you if you listen to the story, you can find them on YouTube. But if you listen to his story, it sounds like a spy novel. And there was an FBI agent or former FBI agent that was high up in the rankings who was helping Biden... Uh, find the information that they could give to the Chinese per this per this witness, and these individuals in the, in the FBI acknowledge that there is an individual an individual called One Eye because I guess he has one eye, but he's kind of the link now. This witness. Is now let me let me see if I can find you the name of this guy. Let me go over to um, YouTube and see if I can't find the name of him. Um, let me see. I want to call him Lao or something. He's an Israeli, and of course, when I want to find it, I can't find it. Right? Well, I can't find it at the moment. Anyway. I'm I'm going to call him Low. I think that's what his name is. Is Low. But anyway, he's an Israeli, and he has been working in, in the United States um, as a director of one of the think tanks in Washington D.C. And then he also worked for the Chinese company that paid off the Bidens. So he knows all of the numbers. He knows everything about what happened between them. But then he got arrested by the Department of Justice. And now he's in hiding because he does not trust the Department of Justice or the FBI. So when you look at this Biden situation, what do you see? You see nothing but nonsense. You see illegal activities going on. And that is not one of the situations that we want to see our country in. We don't want to have a president allegedly getting bribes and we don't want to see his son who has a drug problem and now in the White House what do they have? They found some cocaine. So perhaps right now is a good time that that Joe, not Joe, but um, Hunter Biden moves out of the White House because he's giving that place a bad name showing up to various functions after he has been indicted, and 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 now there's a cocaine issue, and we see him kind of snorting cocaine at this Fourth of July party. At least that's what the video looks like. I mean, it could be true or not true. Who knows? But it does not look good. Whatever's being done within the Biden family needs to end, and Hunter Biden needs to be evicted from the White House where he's living at the moment. And then they have the, the other issue with the grandchild, which is the seventh grandchild that Joe Biden nor any of the Biden family will admit is theirs, even though it's been proven through through testing. So we have a really bad picture at the moment of the family who is running this country and the man who is running this country. And we need for it to stop. Because now it looks like fools are running the White House. Cocaine is being found. And then they can't pin down, or they won't admit to, which room it was It was found in. Some people say it was a library. Some people say it was another uh, entranceway that goes right into the Oval Office. I mean, it. they cannot admit to what's going on. And, and then they came up with the excuse that says, okay, it may never we may never find out because there's so much traffic in that area. That's bullshit. Because oh, sorry about that. 
But it is BS because they have cameras throughout that. Now, let, let me tell you, if the, it would have been a bomb there, if there had been a small bomb wherever they found that package of cocaine, they would have had somebody arrested within uh, eight hours. They would have had somebody arrested. So they have cameras throughout the White House so they know exactly what's going on at any given time. That is the most secure building in the United States. So when they lie to us, after they know that they know where it was found, and they probably know who did it, then we need the truth. And we never get the truth. That's the problem. We never get the truth from the White House, from Joe Biden, or from the press secretary. We never get the truth. That's the problem. Hey, I also wanted to talk to you about, and I'm going to link it down below, but there's a new study that came out. It's called F, I'm sorry, WFH uh proponents just dropped a bomb. At least they, they think it's a bomb, but we all know that this is happening. Fully remote workers are officially less productive. Read it down below. It's by Fortune, Fortune magazine. Now, I have been saying that for a long time, that we are not seeing the productivity out of people working at home. I can speak for myself. I work from home every day, and I get less productive every day because that stupid refrigerator is so close. (laughs) But it has been a problem. Even people who are doing customer service at home, the response time and the know-how is poor. I, customer service has dropped way down from people working remote. Every time you call in, you never get the right answer. Sometimes you have to call in two or three times to finally get to the right answer. But the other issue is that working from home, you have absolutely no one to mentor you. You have no one to bounce ideas off of. You have no one to to sit as a group and make decisions, you you are literally ab- abandoned, basically. I do not like the approach that, oh, we can Zoom it. No, I don't like Zoom. I mean, I love Zoom for my business because I can talk to my clients around the United States and sometimes even the world. But I don't have staff that I need to talk to. But if I had staff, I would be in the office And we would be working together and talking about things and and being able to look over the work and being able to chat and go through problems that, that they may be having. So the study came out and said that working at home is less productive. Read the story and see what you come up with and let me know what you think. Listen, I have several new books. I have three new books out. If you want to uh, find out what they are and if you want to read them, one is about uh, kids and money and teaching parents how to teach them about money and the responsibility of money. And then one on starting a new business and how to run a new business and how to think a new business. And then the other one is um, how to build, how to, um, oh gosh, my mind just went blank. Can you believe that? Oh, ethically thinking which is about ethics and how to handle ethics in the workplace and whichever entity that you're working at. If you would like to talk with me confidentially on a business issue, you can go to my website and schedule an appointment online at www.lodge-co.com. And if you would like to send me a business question, send it to the business advisor at gmail.com. All of this is listed down below. Read the show notes down below. There's a lot there. Everybody go out and have a great TGIF. Love you guys. Talk with you soon. Bye-bye. Thank you for your grace. Your amazing grace. Thank you for the way that you forgive me every day. Thank you for your grace.